How much do you know about Antarctica? Welcome to the Everything Antarctica podcast, where your hosts, Maddie Jordan and Johnny Harrison, will answer all of your questions. We'll talk to globally recognised experts, discuss current affairs, news, and ultimately highlight why Antarctica should matter to you. Come on a journey as we unpack everything you've ever wondered about the world's most extreme environment. Hello, and welcome to the Everything Antarctica podcast. I'm your host, Matty Jordan, and once again, I'm joined by my co-host, Johnny Harrison. How's it going, Johnny? Going good, Matty. What are we talking about this week? This week, given that it's really episode one, we're starting right from the top, right from the very beginning, and we're going to assume that none of our listeners know anything about Antarctica, which I don't think is going to be the case unless people find us organically, but most people that find us through social media will have a general understanding of Antarctica and what it is, so... This will be an introduction to the continent and we'll talk about some interesting facts about it. Yeah, there's so much to cover and I suspect we probably need to keep it um, fairly high level and, and kind of just touch on the bases, uh, basics because we'll be going back in detail, obviously, over some of these things for sure. Definitely. I think probably everything that we touch on today could fill an entire episode on its own. So we'll keep it high level, we'll highlight the basics and this will just be an introduction to Antarctica. Sounds good. So I guess if we start right at the beginning, um, Antarctica is a, is a continent at the bottom of the globe and it's entirely covered with ice. It covers the South Pole and it's um, such a re- remote location that the first people to ever be confirmed to set foot on there was in 1895 by a Norwegian team. It was, yeah. And I think um, it's probably good to highlight the difference between the Antarctic and the Arctic. So Antarctica is a continent that's completely surrounded by water, whereas the Arctic is essentially just frozen sea ice surrounded by a number of continents. So there is actually land under Antarctica once you remove all that ice, which is, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And ice is going to be something that we'll talk in on a future episode for sure. There's a whole episode just there on the different types of ice down in Antarctica, isn't there? For sure, yeah. You mentioned that the first time anyone set foot on Antarctica was in 1895, which is far later than anyone would have set foot in, in the Arctic. And you know, The Arctic had been pretty well explored by then, and we'd even discovered planets that orbit our sun by that point. So it's, yeah, it's pretty remote. That gives you a general idea of how hard it is to get to and how how rugged the journey is to get there back in those days, especially on old wooden ships. Yeah, exactly. We kind of take it for granted these days when there's sort of, what, five gateway cities, which again will be another episode. Um, You know, when you jump on a plane now and potentially can take only a a matter of hours to get down there or you you take a a nice ship, which is all modern. and (laughs) Yeah, but it's still pretty crazy to think, isn't it, that uh, we, we knew more about most of the planets than we did about this southern continent. Yeah, and we're still discovering more. There's still a whole lot that's outstanding that we don't know about. So lots of knowledge to be gained, which is generally why the the scientists are down there at the moment. Absolutely. Another little fact is that it's the fifth largest continent and that it's actually larger than both Europe and Australia. Yeah, that's crazy to think about. And it's about the same size as, as the US and Mexico combined and nearly twice the size of Australia. For me, growing up in Australia and knowing that it takes about four hours to fly from one side of Australia to the other, it's crazy to think how big Antarctica actually is. I think looking out of the plane when you're flying and just looking down at the desert in the middle of Australia, it just seems to go on forever. Absolutely. Funny, just like Australia, uh, Antarctica actually is a, is a desert, the biggest in the world, in fact. And that that's crazy to think about, quite counterintuitive and contrary to what many people would think. Often you think where there's ice, there must be water, and therefore how could this place be a desert? But the classification of a desert really is around how much precipitation it gets in the form of either rain or snow, which uh, raises another interesting fact that it doesn't really snow that much in Antarctica. Of course, given its desert classification, that's what you would expect. But many people think that, you know, because Antarctica is cold and it's covered in ice then it must snow all the time but that's not quite the truth Mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy isn't it speaking of temperatures i don't think it'll come as any surprise that the coldest temperature ever recorded has been in antarctica a little station called vostok um, which recorded the coldest temperature of negative 89.2 degrees celsius or negative 128 degrees fahrenheit and that was ambient temperature not wind chill 
yeah i think both of us have experienced what it's like to be in a pretty cold ambient temperature but it drops quite significantly once you start adding the wind chill factors onto that just feels a whole lot colder absolutely yeah those temperatures are pretty important to keeping antarctica's ice frozen um but there's an interesting fact that if all of antarctica's ice melted it would raise global sea levels by about 60 meters or around 200 feet which would be it would mean that most of the world's coastal cities would be underwater yeah it's pretty devastating really when you think about it isn't it so yeah, it is. speaking of heights uh, antarctica is the continent with the highest average elevation with its highest point being mount vincent which stands at 4892 meters tall or just over 16000 feet It's pretty tall, and again, people don't expect there to be a mountain in Antarctica that's nearly 5,000 metres, so yeah, quite crazy to think about as well. It's definitely not all just flat and white and white on white. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on Instagram videos and photos of people just amazed that there are mountains in Antarctica, but it's pretty normal for us, I guess. If you you haven't been, you probably just think it's all ice, but that's that's not quite the case. There's quite quite a few mountains around. Mm. What about um, wildlife and, and, and such down there, Maddie? What, what have we got? Yeah, so animals, there's quite a few. I think the one that people most associate with Antarctica are around the penguins, but we also get seals, whales, and a variety of different birds all over the continent. The inland areas rarely see wildlife just because the ocean supports most of the, uh, the animals that we get down there. And, yeah, most of the animals live in coastal areas, so... There's a huge amount of wildlife in the ocean from fish to colossal squid, which is um, yeah pretty important for supporting all of the other wildlife that we get around. So Interesting as well with that seasonal um, ebb and flow of the sea ice and as that sort of breaks out and, and how far south the uh, the animals kind of venture as, as those little bits of sea ice break up through the summer. Yeah, definitely. While we're talking about that, that's an interesting little fun fact as well that Antarctica nearly doubles in size throughout the winter when the sea ice grows around the continent. So you get the regular-sized continent in the summertime when the sea ice disappears, but as it starts getting colder over winter, that sea ice grows and the continent effectively doubles. Mm. So that sea ice is the same kind of sea ice as what you'd find up at the North Pole and that's essentially all there is to the North Pole is over the winter you get the, the seasonal sea ice but that's it. So Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of the North Pole, I think it's probably a good time to clarify that um, in terms of wildlife we don't see polar bears down in Antarctica. <laughs> just people dressed up as polar bears from, from time to time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just the odd... Um, practical joker playing some tricks on on some folks and i've been guilty of that (laughs) (laughs) nice one well i guess we've probably missed quite a bit of a few things there but um that gives people a reasonably uh, high level introduction to what we're going to be talking about over in future episodes no doubt definitely yeah with hundreds more episodes to come that's um a lot of the things that we've touched on we'll go into a lot more detail about those so yeah stay tuned if um, if you've got anything that you want us to talk about, then let us know. Yeah, flick us a question and and um, we'll, we'll do our best to answer it as best we can. For sure. Sounds good. That's it for today's episode of the Everything Antarctica podcast. Thanks for listening. If you want to find out more about us as hosts, you can find us on Instagram at Maddie K. Jordan and at Johnny Harrison NZ. We're also on socials. You can find us at Everything Antarctica. This episode will be released on all streaming platforms and the long-form video will be found on YouTube. Check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star rating. This will really help us in our mission to make this podcast as good as it possibly can be. Please share this episode with your friends and social networks so we can spread the word to more people. Until next time, stay cool.